Good afternoon, everybody. At this time, I'd like to call the November 17th, 2022 Diversion Board of Authority meeting to order. Roll call, please. Mr. Peterson. I am here. Dr. Mahoney. Hi. Mayor Dardis. Here. Mayor Carlson. Mr. Hendrickson. Here. Mr. Pepcorn. Mr. Ebbinger. Here. Mr. Strand. Mr. Campbell. Here. Mrs. Sherling. Here. Mr. Steen. Here. Mr. Olson. Here. Mr. Seljable, quorum is present. We do have a quorum. Thank you for everyone for attending today. I realize we're all busy and this will be a hectic meeting because we have a Metro COG immediately following at four o'clock. So we'll see how we can push through this agenda. So with that, item two on our agenda is approval of meeting minutes from October 27th. Look for a motion to approve, amend, discuss, please. Move so approval. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Thank you. Uh, any discussion on the motion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Order of agendas item three. We do not, to my understanding, have any amendments to the proposed agenda. Therefore, we look for the approval of the agenda that we have before us. Move, move, move. Second. second. So move, moved and seconded. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Consent agenda. Three items on that. Any discussion? Looking for a motion. Move to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second, please? Second. second. Move and second the consent agenda be approved as presented. Any discussion on the motion? Any discussion? Any discussion? If not, roll call vote, please. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mayor Dardis. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Eminger. Yes. Mr. Campbell. Yes. Mrs. Sherling. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Olson. Yes. That is everyone. Wonderful. Thank you. Regular agenda item four, Mr. Paulson. All right, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know we're efficient as a board and as an entity, but you're taking it to a whole new level today. <laughs> Remarkably so, so yeah. Mr. Paulson. Let's, <laughs> so keep I'll that, do this let's keep that theme, brother. Yeah, I'll do this as fast and as <laughs> thorough as I can. So um, just a couple of things to note. Uh, we did uh, have a few tours um, and some presentations this last month. I presented uh, with Greg Thielman, um, or uh, I'm sorry, um, at uh, Greg uh, Thompson at the uh, Floodplain Administrators Conference in Minnesota. Um, that is the floodplain association that does cover North Dakota as well. Um, even though it's states, Minnesota, um, there isn't a chapter in North Dakota. So the North Dakota folks do come to the Minnesota. Uh, a lot of great interaction. We had a, about an hour long presentation about the project. A um, lot of great questions, a uh, lot of great awareness uh, for that group. And, and that is a very important group made up of DNR folks and industry uh, floodplain managers. Uh, Chris Bakigard is shown there in the picture. He did a tour for the FM engineers. Those are local engineers and uh, students um, at NDSU. Uh, they went to Oxbow and looked at the, the drainage and the wetland mitigation project there. Um, and then we also had a couple of public information meetings related to the project, one in North Dakota, one in Minnesota, um, related to the, um, the flow of easements and the supplemental crop insurance. Um, and those are very well attended. Uh, we got some great feedback. Uh, from uh, residents, uh, very appreciative that we were able to have those and share the share the information. Uh, just a few quick P3 updates because, you know, even though we sit in here in this warm room today, um, ASN is working around the clock uh, doing excavation on the channel up on the first couple reaches um, near the outlet. Uh, so um, there, we'll show a video here in a moment that'll show the activity that they've been doing, but they have been uh, making quite a bit of progress over the last month. Uh, we have five large utility relocations underway right now up in that area where they're boring um, some, some pretty major utilities underneath the channel. Uh, again, working along, around the clock on the weekends. Uh, this is going to be a 24-7, 365-day um, operation. Uh, and then internally uh, at the authority, um, we're currently reviewing over 100 submittals um, that we've received from RRVA and ASN. Um, so our engineering staff are, uh, are working around the clock, um, reviewing those and trying to get those back um, and get those approved and get those under construction as well. So um, that's all I have, Chairman, but certainly open if there's any other comments or questions. So, Mr. Paulson, yesterday during finance, I know we have a number of people that sit on the finance committee, uh, but there are you know, numbers that don't also listen in, but just in case. Could you talk about uh, creating graphics or some sort of item, a widget, to keep us informed as to construction process, please? 
Yeah, certainly, uh, Mr. Chairman. So there was a discussion at finance yesterday um, concerning um, providing some additional information related to the P3's progress. Um, something similar to the graphics that um, the board members have been receiving uh, related to the lands program, um, showing you know pie graphs and, and how far we've come. Um, and so we will be putting together something similar to that, and we'll preview that with the board members here over the course of the next month. But then that'll give you a graphic representation and some more information about the monthly progress of ASN and how they're doing in meeting their goals and objectives for the buildable units that they're working on. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Uh, team, any questions for our director? And I nothing have, for oh, I have one Commissioner quick, Shirling, One please. quick question. Will you be putting out that graph that I saw a couple years ago that is a timeline map? I don't know if that describes it well, but... It's the Gantt chart. Well, th this is actually a Gantt chart on steroids. Um, but, uh, Commissioner Sherling, you're absolutely right. That is a wonderful graph that shows, you know, where and when things will be constructed, and it shows the map of the whole, of the whole thing. Um, Jacobs did acquire the software that the developer used to, to create that. And so we are full, we are intending to create kind of uh, uh, pieces of that since it's so large, but they're starting up north so we can cut those first few reaches and we can provide that to the board members so they can see the progress. Um, and that's a great visual. I know it's hard to um, view right now, but once you see it, you guys will, uh, will appreciate the information that will be contained just in that one page. <clears throat> Thank you. Yep. Anything further from Mr. Paulson? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Item five on our agenda, general counsel update. Mr. Shockley, anything for the group? You sure? Because <laughs> you're here, you know, nothing to share, nothing at all, nothing? All right, so we're doing good? I'm gonna take that as a yes. All right, item six on our agenda. Are there any questions for Mr. Shockley from our team? Wonderful, item six on our agenda, Army Corps. Ms. Williams, I haven't checked my comm to see if you're here or not. I do not see Miss Williams. Um, yeah, we just got notification. She was having some problems with her mic, so I will attempt to pinch hit here. Okay. Um, but this, I, this, uh, if it's not in your packet, uh, it is in your packet. We did get it in this month. So we did make a request to the core to try to get this during packet prep so we can get this into your guys' packet. But um, so I'll just summarize here a little bit. Uh, you know, work still continues on the diversion inlet structure. Um, construction is about 89% complete. Um, you know, really, there's just some very pretty minor stuff. Uh, if you get a chance to drive out there, they uh, they mainly have the bridge deck going in, and it's starting to look like a more complete structure. Uh, wild rice structure has really advanced over the course of the last few months. Um, so they're currently working on putting in the two gates at that location. Um, again, everything's on schedule uh, for both of those two projects. Uh, the I-29 grade race project is really kind of wrapping up for the season as far as work. Um, things have, are on schedule there as well, and that is anticipated to be completed in 2023. Um, and then if we move down a little bit, the Southern Embankment Reach 1 is, is pretty much um, completed. We did final inspections on the 10th of November. Uh, so that's one of the first pieces that is going to be transferred over to the authority for operation and maintenance um, moving forward since, since it's uh, a completed project. Uh, and then work continues on the Red River structure as well, um, doing a lot of uh, pile driving uh, down there. I think we saw some of the pictures last month of all the steel that was delivered to the site. Um, so they continue to, uh, to work on the pile driving. Uh, and then the drain 27, you'll see that in the video here shortly. Uh, again, a, a pre-final inspection on the 9th of November was completed. Um, native plantings are, are scheduled to be uh, installed and then um, more of the, uh, we'll see how those kind of come up in the springtime. So um, Drayton Dam, uh, their work continues there as well. Um, there is, uh, I, I think the last I heard, the Corps is planning on doing an agency meeting up in Drayton uh, when they, when they plan on uh, destroying the old dam or breaching the old dam. Um, a lot of folks from the DNR and the state of North Dakota were interested in being there and seeing that. If any board members are interested, you certainly uh, can, can uh, accompany us and 
uh, might be a pretty interesting event anyways. It doesn't happen every day where you breach a dam on the Red River. So and thank goodness. For that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you can see there uh, where we are at with the other southern embankment designs um, and the corresponding dates of when we expect construction to begin. So I'll try to answer any questions, but uh, I might have to defer to Terry Williams and get back to you if there are any. Any questions regarding Army Corps progress or their report? All right. Thank you, Mr. Thank Pulsky. you. Well done. Uh, item seven, communications team. And here we go. Hi, I'm Tom Fuchs, the MFDA's Senior Construction Manager with a progress update on the FM Area Diversion Project. Crews have been busy double shifting main channel excavation and levee embankment for the 30 mile long stormwater diversion channel. Nearly three miles of levee embankment have been completed to date, and as the weather turns, channel excavation will continue to greater depths, with the excavated material to be placed in large berms on both sides of the channel. There's more being done north of Fargo, near Argusfield, than pushing dirt, however. Existing utility lines need to be moved to make way for the 30-foot deep channel. Using the horizontal directional drilling method, Crews have started relocating existing lines in the downstream most reaches of the channel from Interstate 29 east to the diversion outlet at the Red River. Our public-private partnership developer, the Red River Valley Alliance, is coordinating their work with 17 different utility owners and crews will complete more than 15 miles of horizontal directional drilling in order to safely pass about 110 utilities below the completed channel. ASN Constructors is also installing drainage blankets and wick drains as part of surcharge embankments at the new combined County Roads 4 and 31 bridge crossing. These mitigation measures will speed up settlement to provide an even roadway approach to the bridge. Farther south at the Wild Rice River structure, Ames Construction is also excavating material. They're digging an engineered channel and continuing to work on the upstream approach aprons in preparation for permanently rerouting the Wild Rice River through the structure itself. Precast concrete girders have now been installed across portions of both the vehicle service bridge and mechanical platform bridge atop Bay 2 of the structure with bridge deck formwork underway as well. In Bay 1 of the structure, crews are making final preparations to hang the second of the structure's two gates, which will mark another much anticipated milestone on the project. Over at the Drain 27 mitigation project, work is wrapping up for the season. U.S. Army Corps of Engineers contractor HSG Park is placing the last of the topsoil, temporary seating, and mulch, and at the downstream end of the site has completed the weir structure which will pond water throughout the excavated wetland. In 2023, permanent vegetation will be planted, completing the 320-acre restoration. Check back next month for updates on other construction sites, or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn for more frequent updates. Wonderful. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. I have a brief communications update for you, and you may have noticed I did not bring you an iced tea, Commissioner, because we did surpass 36% on oh, our open rate. Oh, that's a and I was fixing for a free tea. <laughs> so I was very excited to see that and determined to get there. So hopefully we will stay there, um, continuing to get yeah, great clicks and interest in that newsletter. Uh, we also, in that newsletter, had Greg Eno as our Faces of the Diversion piece, and the next issue will have Sarah, the HR Director for ASN. We've kind of been focusing on the lands folks, and then more on ASN as they try to ramp up hiring and also to get people uh, before it's too snowy out, and then we'll start to shift to some other, uh, more variety through the winter. And then for media, you may have seen that uh, Valley News Live picked up the drone footage from last month after they saw our newsletter. So that ran um, on a number of their segments on TV and online. And then we had a feature published in the Good Life magazine that really kind of breaks down what the diversion is and kind of does a little bit of a diversion 101 for the public. And I did bring some... Uh, copies if you'd like a hard copy. Otherwise, there should have been a link in the board bulletin for you too. And then I just wanted to mention that um, if you go on the website under construction status, we do have some progress 
charts and updates on each of the components there. We hope to get it, uh, it'll be more sophisticated in the new year, especially once we have the new website up and running. But there is uh, a little bit there so far that tracks the progress on all the different components and where we're at. Do you have any questions I might be able to answer or comments? Okay, any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, Roger. Yeah. On that Good Life magazine article, mm -hmm. is it true that elephants weigh 14,000 pounds? <laughs> because I noticed that we, was We check 10, our math. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was 10 elephants and it was 140,000 pound. I don't know if that was one of the tenter gates or, or all three of them, but you, you related it to 10 elephants. I thought, wow, elephants weigh 14,000 pounds. I will triple check and let you know, but we, uh, uh, we definitely checked all the math several times. Elephants are out the gate already, so it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. <laughs> Roger, what does a combine weigh? Uh, more than that. <laughs> <laughs> this is when we need to sub in the more you know star that comes across the screen. <laughs> Commissioner Steen. Well, I just Googled that. Uh, Roger, I just Googled that for you. <laughs> male elephants can weigh up to 15,000 pounds. Oh, just so okay. You, you had a question I wanted to get you answered. <laughs> yes. oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner <laughs> Steen. <laughs> Our educational section. There we go, yes. Yeah, you had me nervous for a Tom, little bit. There. Tom's team doing some heavy lifting. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. Uh, any questions for our comms team? If not, thank you. He's trying Thank to you. Delay the Pushing baby. on to uh, land management item eight, Commissioner Sherling. We don't do this anymore formally, but uh, just Miss Smith or anything to add, Commissioner Sherling. Right to Miss Smith. Uh, right to Miss Smith. I think she's outstanding. She's got a ha pretty good handle on it. They're busy. Thank you so much. Um, so on this first slide here, you can see. <laughs> Uh, you are used to seeing these two maps. The one thing to point out is that we did close on 11 parcels that have been acquired since we were here a couple weeks ago in October. Again, those aren't new acquisitions that we were able to close, but simply closing the final paperwork. On the next slide, if you can scroll down, you'll note that there is 91.3% complete in the construction footprint. <clears throat> we're sitting about 30% complete in the UMA. That number, if you scroll down just a little bit more, you'll note that the number did drop 1% from October due to two new MOUs that we need in the channel and also adding parcels uh, for SE5. On the next slide then, um, also note that the Southern Embankment is hovering still around that 75% mark. It'll be a little bit before we see that dial move because we're still waiting for the final drawings from the core for both SE3, 4, and 5. Until we get those, it is a little bit more challenging for us to go out and acquire the necessary property rights, although we have had some land agents um, have some success with that. Again, the upstream mitigation area with our flow easements, we're hovering uh, just below the 30% mark. And then we continue to work towards the environmental monetary easements. <coughs> Excuse me. So on the next slide, then, I do want to focus a little bit on the key activities. I know Mr. Paulson had noted that we held two public information meetings. The primary focus was the crop insurance program. We had one in North Dakota in the evening and one in Minnesota in the morning. Those I would consider were very successful. We had anywhere from you know two dozen in the Minnesota side to um, 30 to 40 on the North Dakota side. Alex Offerdahl did most of the speaking. Um, I don't think he made it past more than four of his slides at either of the meetings, which is exactly what we want to see. There were a lot of questions. He was able to answer all of those questions. Uh, we did immediately follow up with the focus group, at which then we were able to kind of pose some of the questions that were brought to us <clears throat> that maybe we didn't have fully vetted out, and Alex wasn't able to provide an answer to, to that focus group, and, and we continue to work towards solutions with that. We are continuing to negotiate settlement agreements for existing eminent domain cases. The Cass County Joint Water Resource District approved three more settlement offers this morning. Uh, we do have a couple that are outstanding. We continue to negotiate on those. At this point in time, there is just one eminent domain case that uh, I do expect to go to trial. That'll be January 18th. Uh, the batch one last written offers for the flow adjacents went out to 10 property owners. Um, responses from those property owners are due back to us by November 
28th. Um, we are prepared to file eminent domain on November 29th. Uh, we did finalize batch two this morning with the Cass County Joint uh, Water Resource District this morning for 16 property owners. Uh, those letters will go out on Monday, expected if we don't have a response or negotiated settlement that eminent domain will be filed on January 2nd. And we are in the current process of working through batch three. Mm -hmm. So are there any questions that I can answer? Any questions for land management? Mr. Campbell. Not a sure. question, but a comment. Yes. Um, the last couple of our MCC JPA meetings, we've also had quite a few um, things get go through and be approved with uh, some of our landowners. But I wanted to uh, comment um, <coughs> Previously, our MCJPA board had requested information on, on some of the other things going on that we don't hear about, some, some side projects that are going on, like what we're doing with cemeteries and the Wolverton project and the Georgetown project. At our MCCJPA meeting today, we received an excellent report uh, from, from Jody and Peggy and Jessica and all those involved, and I just wanted to say thank you for, for that. It's something that's been really important to our county commission to know we're we're, what, what's going on in those things, and it's really nice to see the efforts that are being taken uh, place in working with those, with those communities and with the watershed board. So I just wanted to say thank you for, thank you. for doing that. Appreciate that. Yeah. Peggy did all the work, so. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Anything further on this item? If not, thank you. Uh, item 9, Finance Mayor Dardis, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Finance Committee met yesterday. And, uh, Terry Gerhardt, Finance Director for the City of Fargo, presented $11,594,000 worth of bills. And she uh, also reported that our net cash position is $145,006,235. Um, with regard to the question that you asked earlier of Mr. Paulson, our Executive Director, uh, the Finance Committee, had, as you were a part of that, uh, I think that we're going to be able to have a great report based on the billable units and the buildable units. So as the buildable units come forward and the billable units follow the contract of it, uh, we'll have that diagram, as uh, Commissioner Sherling has mentioned, possibly that Gantt chart type thing of, of showing where we're at, percentage done, dollars spent, and all of that. So, um, so we had a good meeting. Uh, before uh, I conclude my report, I would like to personally thank, and I think that the board should thank, uh, Commissioner Rick Steen for his service on the board. He has decided that he's going to go into greener pastures and, uh, and have, uh, enjoy his life. So uh, I, he has been so valuable to me as coming on as uh, a, a member of the Finance Committee, and uh, I'm going to miss him dearly. And Rick, I want to thank you very much for all that you've done. Well, thanks, Bernie. Um, it's been a pleasure working with the Diversion Authority, the Finance Committee. I think the, the first year I got on the County Commission, I was put on the Finance Committee and learned a lot in our first meeting. And so I think it was a year or two later I got put on the board and uh, really appreciated the opportunity and working with a lot of great people. And, and uh, I had one goal. I actually had a number of goals and I ran for office the first time. And number one was... I want to work on the, on the diversion, make sure this thing gets done at some point. So I feel good about that. So appreciate the opportunity and everybody. Uh, you guys are doing a great job, and I know I'll see it get done by 2027, right, Joel? All right. 26. 26. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mayor Dardis? And yes, to reiterate, Commissioner Steve will not only be missed here, he'll be missed in the county commission as well. We do have an amiable replacement uh, that sat in one of these chairs not too long ago so hopefully that'll his skills and, and talents will carry through but yeah uh we've relied on rick a great deal especially since he got a little bit retired and had a little more time and the next thing you know we had a hell of a commissioner <laughs> <laughs> we had a good one before but it got better which is hard to believe so with that uh concluding item nine on ten other business anything for other business authority members uh mr paulson has something for other business Thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to make a note. This is finance related, um, but we did discuss the 2023 cash budget at the Finance Committee. Yep. Um, there were really no changes. We requested another month, um, so some of the utility bills that are fairly large 
we'll know whether they're going to hit within the 22 budget or the 23 and then some of the land acquisition as well will have more clarity um, i think it is the intent to bring the final recommended budget to the december board meeting um, but of course that will go through finance first so just wanted to make a note for the board okay. the, the version two of the uh, cash budget is 213 million five hundred and fifty one thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars one of the other things I neglected to mention that and again this is a great uh, uh, suggestion by mr. Steen was also on the administrative budget that we're going to ask for a line item breakdown of that because uh, in the years past we've always had a number of salaries and as we've as we've grown into this uh, we probably don't need the finance director that we normally did so we just asked for some uh, uh, clarification on some of those line items as to what we're to go anticipate for the uh, cash budget as well as the administrative budget. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, anything further under finance, if not, or other business, excuse me, anything further business, if not? Next meeting will be December 15th, 2022. Look for a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We stand adjourned. Thank you for a very efficient meeting off to Metrocog. <laughs>